the edge is perfect because that's what it was made of. And we keep those, we, we keep these as the zones of growth so that we can continue to grow. If I don't have enough growth hormone, then I get what? Pituitary dwarfism. There you see that? Uh, see how it's all linked, guys? So the HSE yolk sac goes to liver and spleen because yolk sac disappears. Liver and spleen got their own job to do, so the HSE has to be. They're sitting around waiting for their penthouse in the sky to be formed, which is the medulla cap the medulla cavity of the, of the bone. They'll migrate in there, but that's not the end of the story. Does everybody hear me? That's not the end of the story. I can erase this. Can we erase this? Okay. Twenty-seven. Okay. So now we're in the bone marrow. So these HSCs are sitting in the bone marrow, and now it's bone. Well, those HSCs, they migrate to these areas here, just underneath here, called the epiphyses. Right? And in the epiphysis, that's where your HSCs are really going to reside, and that's within the spongy bone marrow. Everybody hear me? Within the spongy bone marrow, because the compact bone marrow, the compact bone, right? The compact bone is, is designed specifically for weight bearing. Spongy bone is there to kind of interact with the blood vessel so it's easy to dissolve. So you got osteoclast and kind of associated there. And then of course in, interfacing with that is 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 this, you know, it is an area here that has yellow marrow, and then everywhere here on the ends, which would have the red marrow. Everybody understand that? Um, and what will wind up happening is that yellow marrow that's in here, so that yellow marrow is fat, so we're going to store fat in there. And that fat, well, that's high energy. You ever understand that? And we're talking about a hematopoietic stem cell. So these, these, these little red dots, these are the hematopoietic stem cells, and what they're going to become is going to be, they're going to give rise to blast cells. One of them is referred to as the erythroblast. The erythroblast will give rise to erythrocytes, what we call a functional red blood cells. Those are, they leave, they leave, they exit, they exit into blood vessels. When they do, they become enucleated. No mitochondria. No ER. No. Um, no mitochondria. No ER. And because there's no mitochondria, then there's no. Uh, No, no aerobic. There is no nucleus. Sorry. You are correct. Cellular respiration. That means I'm I'm not I'm not gonna use the oxygen that I'm carrying in my red blood cell for anything else other than to bind it to deliver it to tissue. Do you understand guys? That's what the red blood cell is going to do. So the red blood cell, it becomes the functional red blood cell, the erythrocyte, the mature erythrocyte, right? I'll write it up there. So the mature erythrocyte has, it's enucleated, has no nucleus, no mitochondria, no ER. And because it has no mitochondria, right? Then there's no aerobic cellular respiration. That means that the red blood cell can only live 90 to 120 days. And sure enough, it's the job of the spleen. Spleen recycles the red blood cell. Well, the spleen, by recycling the hemoglobin, so here's the problem. Spleen recycles red blood cells. But in the red blood cells, there's hemoglobin. Everybody hear me? Well, the spleen recycles red blood cells and recovers that hemoglobin. It'll clip the iron off. 
and recover the iron, and it'll take heme, sorry, it'll take the the, the, the heme part and it'll create Billy Rubin, which is fat soluble unconjugated. Meaning it hasn't gone to the liver because the liver does conjugation. So that means then the spleen. So this happens in the spleen. That means then here it goes to the liver. Liver then takes the fat soluble bilirubin, makes it water soluble bilirubin, and that's conjugated. And that, because it's water soluble, can be secreted, guys. That can be secreted in the GI, recovered from the GI when converted by E. coli in the GI, then reabsorbed by the GI, sent in back into plasma, go to the kidney, and then be filtered by the kidney and present in the urine. So it works great. It's an indicator for the color of our fecal material, but it's a better indicator of the, the concentration of our urine. So it acts as, a, as an indicator of the concentration of our urine. So if your urine comes out too yellow, that means you're not drinking enough water. Everybody see? So this is quite amazing, this whole, this whole thing. Now, keep in mind now, they, there's a huge clinical thing here. There's a lot. Because, like I said, if I have no coagulation factors, and I have hemophilia. But what happens if my hemoglobin is not right? Anybody know? We call those hemoglobin obelies. So we said hemoglobin. Hemoglobin gets converted to bilirubin. Well, hemoglobin, hemoglobin, hemoglobin is what makes erythrocytes erythrocytes. Because that's all they are is hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is made up of two alpha polypeptide chains, two beta polypeptide chains. Four hemes, sorry, I apologize. Yeah, four hemes, and that heme is broken down into two things, which are the four flat carbon chains known as protoporphyrin, okay, and four iron atoms in cation form Fe plus 2. So everybody knows what anemia is? What's anemia? Mm -hmm. I'm hearing a lot of I'm hearing a lot of different answers here, huh? I'm here, not enough oxygen. Well, that's 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 the long that that's okay. So anemia is a big umbrella. Hmm? There's plenty of things that can cause anemia. You can have smaller than normal red blood cells. Hmm? You can have you can have red blood cells whose shape is malformed, like sickle cell disease. You can have a lack of hemoglobin production. Those hemoglobinopathies that result in anemia. You know what I mean? You can have an iron deficiency anemia. You can have a folic acid deficiency, which would lead to an anemia. You can have a vitamin B12 deficiency that leads to anemia. Everybody hear me? Shit. That's a lot of the lot of stuff that can lead to anemia. Anemia will lead to hypoxia, huh? Because whatever the reason is. For whatever, lack of red blood cell numbers, they're number, they're normal, but there's just there's not enough of them. What is that an indicator of? Anybody know? There's not enough of them. Not enough of your red blood cells, mature red blood cells floating around in the plasma. That's a form of anemia, but what would be an indicator of that? What what would you be concerned with? The 62 year old male comes in. Internal bleeding. Some form of internal bleeding. What you gonna do? Ha <laughs> ha What you gonna do? You think it's internal bleeding? Where do you think it is? Could be a couple things. Because he suffered from hypertension, you gotta ask the right question. Could he have an aortic aneurysm? 
Could he be leaking out? He's on his deathbed right in front of you. Huh. No matter what you're going to do, unless you take him into surgery, he's going to die. Yeah. Could he have a, a, a gastric ulcer? Yeah. If the ulcer is bad enough, it starts bleeding regularly and you're losing the fecal material. So what am I going to test the fecal material? You understand? Test it for a cold blood. Send him home with a little stick and a little cardboard paper. Right? You make sure you catch half stream. Right? So you got to... Uh, and then wait, hold it, and then catch it half mid, right? You get mid, mid section of it. Now you got to chop a little bit off. And you got to spread it on the card and put it in. It, put it in the label biohazardous waste. Take it to the doctor, get it right. That's how it goes. Unless he wants more, right? That's just for a cold blood smear. They call it a cold blood smear. If they want more for other purposes, then they're going to have to have a whole sample or half a sample, preferably somewhere in the middle. So you have to use a shoebox. Uh. Oh, y'all nothing taboo in this class, dude. especially in 2086 where I get to talk about a repro. What? <laughs> That's like the funnest time for me. All right. <laughs> so, any questions, guys? Yes. HB is hemoglobin. Now let me write it out for you. So hemoglobin. And hemoglobin is a huge, this is huge, guys. This is an intracellular protein. And, uh, so the hemoglobin, so four flat carbon chains. The word is protoporphyrin. So now everybody ready? If I have a problem, Making protoporphyrin. Will I have anemia? Yes. If I shake their head? Yes. yes. You know what they call that? Protoporphyrias. Did everybody hear me? They call them porphyrias. You look them up. It's another form of anemia. If I if I don't have iron, iron deficiency anemia. Eh? What did I tell you? Folic acid, folic acid, and vitamin B12 are key components to the synthesis of protoporphyrin. So if I don't have enough vitamin B12 and I don't have enough folic acid, will I be able to make protoporphyrin? No. Everybody understand that? And if I can't make protoporphyrin, I don't have problems with the protoporphyrin ring or synthesizing the protoporphyrin ring in terms of its structure. What I have is the, the lack of cofactors to stimulate mat main, like more production of it. So that's where it can induce an anemia, but it's not due to something wrong with the synthesis of the protoporphyrin ring. Everybody understand it? Iron deficiency anemia, if I can't recover enough. If I can't recover enough from diet or I can't recover enough from spleen. You never understand? Huh? Um, if, 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 if I'm someone who can't coagulate and I'm a hemophiliac, yes? Then red blood cells will be able to leave blood vessels and into connective tissue, so now I get bruising. I get large amounts of iron not recovered by spleen. You understand? Could that in itself, separate of the disease of bleeding out regularly, could I then have an anemia? Guys, you see how shit gets complicated real quick? Yeah. Uh -huh. Question. You said what was you lost? You said for a B12 and folic acid. Oh. Mm-hmm. Folic acid. If you look up, just look up anemias, you'll see they're all, they're all listed. There's normal cytic, normal chromic. That means the cell looks normal and the cell stains normal. Then you got microcytic, the cell is small, right? And it's and it's and it, and something's wrong with it staining. So they call it microcytic and microchromic or hypochromic versus macrocytic and hyperchromic. You see that? So they're talking about the staining characteristics and the size of it because that's how we look at red blood cells in terms of histology. Anybody here interested in histological lab? Laboratory sciences, big business, huge business. Is anybody who's considering, not sure what they want to do? Question. Um, the top two is the last time we had clinical was the person that broke their, the, broke their leg. Yes, the child that broke their leg and didn't tell their parents for like four or five hours, and then it, he finally realized it was broken, he couldn't walk on it. They took him to the hospital, they said it, and then he, they, they, you know, they came back that following morning, the kid died. Yeah, yeah that's a fat embolism. Because that fat, if you break that, that fat can go into the blood, seep into the blood vessel, and 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 it causes an, an embolism. What they call that it seeps into the blood vessel and causes embolism. It's called fat embolism. 
That's another clinical scenario. <laughs> I can get I can get immature red blood cells to leave the bone marrow and go into bloodstream. You hear me? Does that sound like a good idea? No. Could that give me an anemia? No. <laughs> what would that be an indicator of? Anybody know? Cancer. Did everybody hear me? Cancer and or infection and or infection. Cancer and or infection. Are there some infectious stuff that can cause cancer? Everybody shake their head? Everybody shake their head? Epstein-Barr virus? <laughs> right? Oh yeah, there's a few of them. The adenovirus. Mm -hmm. There are viruses that can cause cancers. Okay. Um, all right. So that's the erythroblast. That comes from the HSC. A retroplast is a mature cell, enucleated, no mitochondria, no ER, no aerobic cell, cellular respiration. Aerobic, right? Aerobic. Apologize for that mess. Aerobic cellular respiration. Live only 9 to 120 days. Spleen recycles them. The, the red blood cell has to be broken down and destroyed. The hemoglobin gets converted. The iron gets reclaimed. The liver takes care of the, the bilirubin. And hemoglobin, the component of hemoglobin, well, this is what hemoglobin is functionally. There's two alpha polypeptides and two beta polypeptides. This is how they look when they're associated together. And I think there's like something like 15, 15 times 10 to the 6 milligrams per deciliter of this stuff in the each red blood cell. So it's a, a ton of this. Do you understand? There's a ton of it. A ton of it in each red blood cell. And its only job is to deliver oxygen from, from the lung to the tissue. And then to deliver carbon dioxide from tissue to the lung. Did everybody hear me? Only one problem. The heme that's in the middle of these. So each one of these has the heme is in the middle. So if I were to draw a, 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 like a blue, just a square or whatever in the middle, that's the heme, okay? And in that heme is where you have, so you got one, two, three, four heme. There's that flat carbon chain with the iron in the middle. That's where oxygen, the heme is where oxygen will bind. So that flat carbon chain, let's just, I'll draw it as a flat carbon chain, right? Simple. In the middle there you have iron, and oxygen will bind to iron within the heme. That heme is sitting within each alpha, beta uh, protein, polypeptide protein. Okay? Yes? Now, it's interesting because there's another set of diseases that give rise to, hemo, uh, to, to uh, anemias. And I told you, they're called hemoglobinopathies. I'm sorry, uh, yeah, hemoglobinopathies. One of those, or two, two of them, are referred to as the alpha thal le semia versus the beta thalassemia. Now watch. Guys, what's the type of polypeptides that we have? Alpha, poly, alpha polypeptides and beta polypeptides. Everybody agree? Guys, if I'm making protein, does, doesn't that mean I have to have a gene? Everybody look up. Look up for a moment. If I'm making a protein, doesn't that mean that I have to have a gene that encodes for that protein? Not look up, uh, look up for me. <laughs> you know what? You know what? You know what? You know what? <laughs> I mean, look up at me. Because I've seen people look down, I want to look up at me. So look, guys, if I have polypeptides, then my genes have to, right? My DNA, RNA, protein, everyone agree? DNA, RNA, protein. Sure enough. The genes for alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia, you give four alpha genes. Four alpha genes you get from mom and dad when they got together to do the wild thing. That means two for mom, two for dad. Everybody understand? And you only get two beta genes to make all the beta chains that you need. And you get four alpha genes to make all that alpha, alpha polypeptides that you need. Alpha chain gene. Understand that? Any questions so far? So now the disease is 
I've got a problem with my alpha or I got a problem with my beta. Now, which one of the two do you think would be more severe? So, all right, all right, everybody follow? Right, here's, I got four alphas, yeah? If one of my alpha genes goes bad, how many How many I have left that's still good? Three. Three, you want to agree? So mom, dad, you gave me one out of four bad, no big deal, I still got 75%. Everyone agree? Now, if I get two of those genes, two out of those two genes bad, what do I got now? Two. Two, two out of four, right? That's what, 50%? So now I'm down to 50% production, yeah? That's if I get two genes, much rarer. Now, even rarer, I get three bad genes out of four, now what? Now I only got one gene out of four working, that's 25%, yeah? Guys, you see? Now watch, here's beta. It only got two genes, yeah? You get one gene bad. <laughs> oh. You get one gene bad, what happens? You understand? Got me? I'm not gonna say it out loud. But you understand that? You only got two. Take one away. You're screwed. You follow? So the beta thalassemias are the more severe of the two. To get a, a severe form of alpha would require you to have more than one gene affected. You understand? And that's rare. Not to say it doesn't happen, it's just rare. Beta thalassemias are rare too. Where do I see a beta thalassemia patient? Where would I see them most commonly? Anybody? And, and, and I tell you, 25% of me, 24% of me is Greek. Kind of like Southern, Italian, Sicilian, right? Yeah. But luckily it's only 24%, yeah? Thank God I got a lot of diversity in that genome, right? Everything from Russian, uh, Asian, European Jew, 1%, right? And then African, right? From the North African continent, right? And then even Sen Senegal, right? Which I thought was really interesting. It's like, what? Y'all not building in Senegal? Sweet. I don't want to go to Senegal now. Now I want to go to Senegal. I want to see what Senegal is about. And see what, you know, what my ancestors fell in love with. But it's interesting, see? So it's great to be, it's great to have mixed kids. You know what I'm saying? It's great for your kids to be mixed because the more mixed they are, then the less likely they are to share genetic similarity. Do you agree? I go to marry my cousin. Huh? And my cousin and I got the same genes. And when we have kids, then every time we have kids, and there's, there's, a, there's, a, there's a chance that, hey, I have one of three, four, four genes bad in alpha thalassemia. You have one of four genes bad in alpha thalassemia because we're so related. Then our kids, sure enough, eh, we, only, we only gotta give two of the four. We gotta figure out which two we gonna give. You know? So if I get one good, one bad, and she gives one good, one bad, then all of a sudden our kids got two out of four bad, He's got he's got a pretty he's got a he's got a pretty mild form of alpha thalassemia. You ever understand that? Fifty percent production. You ever understand that? Guys, these are all all the stuff that we do anemia. Sickle cell anemia. Love it. This is my favorite of them all. Sickle cell anemia. So that's alpha thalassemia. And so when we're talking about the formation of the protein from the genes, if the genes are bad, if they're mutated. You get the thalassemias, guys. You got me? And you determine the severity of the genes based on the severity of the mutations. Okay? Then, on the other hand, when you're talking about sickle cell, so this is how we, we do sickle cell, HBS. HBS has to do with one single amino acid on the polypeptide chain that gets switched up from a glutamic acid to a vanine. And because of that, because of that substitution, that amino acid substitution, look it up, chapter three, at the end, talks about cell, hemoglobin, sickle cell hemoglobin, the sickle cell hemoglobin will look like this. Because of that mutation, the alpha and betas will link in chains. See that? In chains, in, instead of functional quadrupolypeptides, they're linking up in chains because of the mutation. It was a mutation to the gene, but it wasn't affecting, you weren't knocking out the whole gene, you were just knocking out one nucleotide, which then changed the amino acid from 
from a water soluble one to a water insoluble one. And the moment you did that, you lost the ability to arrange in this form, and you become linear. Everybody see that? And that happens at what? So this linear polymerization, linear polymerization occurs. It's due to low O2 tension. When am I in low O2 tension? Anybody here got sickle cell? Anybody here know anybody who has sickle cell? So, personal, family friend, family or friend? Friend, friend. So I had, there was a patient, young boy, no patient, right? Presents to the ER, breaking my heart. Kid comes in, he's having a heart attack. Dude, we do the EKG, we, we already, they already know him. He's a regular. I'm just a volunteer, and it breaks my heart to see this kid in the Peeves Award over here, Jackson, because everybody knows he's having a heart attack and ain't shit they can do for him. Yeah, and he's complaining of pain. I'm gonna tell you something, visceral organ pain is, is horrible. When your chest starts hurting, it feels like there's an elephant on it, right? It feels like you're having a, 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 an asthma attack. Anybody here got asthma? Severe asthma? Yeah, so that same strain that you feel in the chest that actually can can be due to the heart because the heart is highly metabolically active, requires oxygen constantly. Any lack of oxygen to the, to the heart is gonna induce pain receptors to form. So this kid's having a heart attack right in front of me. You, you see it on the EKG, we got him on telemetry, and all we can do is what? Give him oxygen and morphine for pain. Because when he gets into those, o, those low O2 tension states, which can do, be due to stress events, then that's, those stress events will lower the O2 tension that will induce the linear polymerization, which will cause the red blood cell to sickle and form. There we see. Because instead of the red blood cell being round, it's now, it's now like a rod, and it's trying to get through the capillary. Yeah? So what happens when it goes through the capillary? It gets stuck. It gets stuck. It gets stuck. And you see it prevents other red blood cells from, from, from going. And that's where you get, again, lack of oxygen, hypoxia. So all these different diseases we've been talking about, guys, there's one common theme. Hypoxia. And you know what hypoxia leads to? Metabolic acidosis. Aerobic cellular respiration is metabolic acidosis. You convert, you convert pyruvate to lactic acid. Lactic acid begins to build up. It's a no, that's normal when you don't have enough oxygen in the muscle. But when you don't have it to anywhere else in any other tissue, you're gonna get an increase in lactic acid because there's no oxygen. You understand? So I don't care what it is, I don't care what form of anemia it is, all of it's gonna to lead to hypoxia. And if it leads to enough hypoxia, you're gonna have metabolic acidosis, and that's why metabolic acidosis is the most common form of acid-base disorder. When you don't eat for 12 hours, you're already in a metabolic ketoacidosis. <laughs> it's the most common form of acid-base imbalance in the human body. So blood plasma is not just involved with all this other stuff. It's also involved with what? Transport of acids and bases. And because bicarbonate, because of bicarbonate, or I'm sorry, because of this guy, it's also a buffering solution. Blood plasma is also a buffering solution. Separate of the red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. We'll deal with uh, red blood cells and platelets on Thursday. Any questions, guys? Everybody signed the signing sheet? I know I saw it going around. Very good. Well, I got more than one. You guys got more than one. I don't need one. You guys are making my job harder. Just give me one.